Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning on a very lovely Sunday morning. So I would like to welcome everybody to Cantley Methodist Church online service this morning. Um, today, our call to worship is based on Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. It says, come all who are heavenly laden, come and I shall give you rest. The Lord is calling us this morning to come to him, to lay down all our anxiety, uncertainty, weakness and failure before him this morning. Let us forget about everything and let us come together in spirit to worship the Lord our God. We're going to begin our worship as we sing our first hymn, Hear the Call of the Kingdom. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to sing together. So this is our first hymn, Hear the Call of the Kingdom. Lift your eyes to the King. Now, let us pray. This is our opening prayer. As we have gathered together in your presence with expectation, O oh God, we are hungry for an encounter with you, eager to hear your word. Open our eyes and ears to the presence of your Holy Spirit, 
May the seed of your word scatter among us this morning, fall on fertile soil. May they take root in our hearts and lives and produce an abundant harvest of good word and deed. We pray that you will be with us, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for all that you have done for us over the week as well. As we come before you, we recognize that we have sinned against you, Lord. We pray for your forgiveness. We pray that you have mercy on us, cleanse us, purify our heart, and make us clean again. As we confess our sins, we know that you're merciful and your word says that if we confess to you, you are faithful to forgive us. So we believe that you have forgiven us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our teacher and our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, we thank God so much for another day today as we have another opportunity to share the word of God together. Today, um, the Bible passage is coming from 1st King 19, 1 to 8. I'm just going to read from the New International Version Bible. So, this is the word of God. Elijah flee. Now, Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever used severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Bathsheba in Judea, he left his servants there while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a bush, sat down, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He, took, he looked around and there by his head, was some bread baked over hot coal and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then he lay down. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by the food he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached the mountain of God. This is the word of God. So today's sermon I have is been entitled For the Journey is Too Much. So today, when we look at our Bible passage that has been read today from First King. 19 1 to 8 we see that Elijah who was a great prophet in those time was strengthened by Jezebel but if we are to understand this Bible passage we have to know what happened before so when we look at the previous chapter we found out that Elijah killed the prophets of Baal. These are the people, the prophets who were 
um, worshipping idols, and they were causing so much problem in, in Elijah's time. And because of that, Elijah threw a challenge and said, everybody should call their God, and whoever's God bends the sacrifice, that person's God is real. So they went ahead with this challenge. They all met together and the people, the prophet of Baal, they called on their God. They did whatever they have to do, called their God, but their God never came. But when Elijah prayed and God came and took the sacrifice and bent all the sacrifice. So now after this event, Elijah killed all the prophets of Baal. Now, Ahab, who was the king at that time, and his wife, Jezebel, who was the queen at that time. Ahab went to tell his wife, Jezebel. And when Jezebel heard this, Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, a great prophet of God, a man who has just defeated the prophet of Baal. These are false prophets, basically. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, telling him that tomorrow by this time, if he is not dead, then she, Jezebel, will, will not be there to actually see him leave, basically. Basically, she threatened him that she's going to take his life and she's going to kill him. All of a sudden, when we look at chapter, um, verse 3, all of a sudden, Elijah began to be afraid and he ran away and he went. He ran away to, um, to go and pray. And when he got there, he was praying to the Lord and he told the Lord, just take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. I'm useless. Just take me. Let me die. I'm too scared. She's going to kill me and everything. So he began to complain to God and God said nothing at that time. Just God said, kept quiet. So after all the complaining, the morning, he fell asleep. And when Elijah fell asleep, the angel of the Lord woke him up and told him to eat. So he woke him, the angel of the Lord woke Elijah up the first time and he ate. Then he slept again. Then the angel of the Lord came back again, second time, woke him up to eat again, second time. And he told him, but the journey ahead of you is too much. So when we look at this passage, how does this passage really apply to us, apply to our life, apply to our current situations? And when we look at it, um, the, the, this Bible passage, first of all, when we look at Jezebel, Jezebel represents the world. When we see what is going around in our current world now, we are being threatened by a lot of things in this world. We are being threatened by COVID. We are being threatened by recession. We are being threatened by famine. We are being threatened by terrorist attack. We are being threatened by racial division. We are being threatened by corruption. We are being threatened by all kinds of things in this world. And of course, when it gets to a point, we are scared, we are afraid, and we begin to tremble. We begin to think that we cannot deal with this anymore. We begin to um, give up, and we begin to fall down, and we begin to feel like, no, we can't carry on again. God is not there again. We are not hearing from God, and we are on our own, and we begin to feel under pressure, and we begin to worry we feel anxious and things begin to go downhill from there. But we have to know that God is with us through all those things that is happening. Just as the world will be like Jezebel, threatening us every day with all kinds of diseases, all kinds of um, issues, all kinds of um, family breakdown, divorces, everything that is going on 
in our life. Through all this strength, there is a God who is still silent. And we wonder what God is doing about all these things. But in the silence of God, God is speaking. Because when Elijah went and actually prayed to God and complained to him and everything, God already knew what is happening. Sometimes we may assume that God does not know what is going on in our life. Or we may think that God does not understand how we feel. We have to know that we have Christ Jesus who has gone through everything that we have gone through already. And he is now our priest, our high priest because of that. So when we look at this passage, it tells us that through everything that is going on, all the trade that we are receiving from the Lord, God is still in our, with us and God is still here and he sees everything that is going on. So secondly, this Bible passage also tells us that when our physical being or when we are physically under pressure or when we are physically depressed or we are physically down and we are physically afraid, it affects our spiritual things as well. Because when we look at verse 3, we saw that Elijah was so afraid to the point that he was so tired, he was hungry, he was not even he didn't even take care of himself because of because he was so much afraid of what is going to happen to him, what is going to happen to his life. We have to remember that this is the same man who when we look at the previous chapter, he killed the prophet of Baal. And now he this powerful man of God, now he's afraid. And it happens as well to us as well. Sometimes we become afraid. Sometimes we become worried. And we, we neglect our physical well-being. And when we neglect our physical well-being, it affects our spiritual life. When we are so stressed, when we are so frustrated, it affects how we pray. It affects how we read the word of God. It affects how we communicate to God. And it affects us spiritually as well. But when we continue to look at this Bible passage, the third thing we also see is that when Elijah went to God and complained and everything. God did not say anything. Instead, God sent an angel to make him a lovely meal to eat because God knew that he had to eat and he allowed him to sleep as well. So he had the first meal and he slept. He had the second meal and he slept. Imagine an angel of the Lord cooking for you. Definitely you will sleep. And definitely Elijah did sleep in this Bible passage as we read. So after he slept and he ate and he slept and he ate. Now he, the Bible tells us that he gained strength. He was strengthened by the food and then he was able to travel 40 days and 40 nights until he reached the mountain of God. So, you know, sometimes we must not neglect our physical being or we must not neglect our physical strength because we need food to strengthen us. Just because something is going on in our life, just because everything is not going on in the world does not mean that it has to impact on our well-being because the moment we neglect our well-being, it also has impact on our spiritual life as well. And we must be careful about that. Thirdly, when we look at it, Elijah did not run to the world. Elijah did not call a friend. Elijah did not go and tell people about what he is going through. Elijah did not go into the world and go and shout and complain about his problem. But he went to God. We have to learn that in our time of difficulty, in our time of confusion, we have to run to God because God is the one who will comfort us through this discomfort, just as we know everything that is going on around the world. There is so much to take in. And sometimes we wonder what is happening to our world, what is happening to our community, 
what is happening to our family. But the truth is that the only person who can give us comfort through this journey of our Christian life is God. And if we run to him, he will comfort us. When we run to him, he will strengthen us and he will give us all the strength that we need to carry on on the journey. We must never forget that we are alone. We are not alone. We are not alone in this world. Sometimes we will feel like all the burden is on us. We must, we will feel like everybody is looking up to us. I have to do this. I have to do that. I, I, I don't have time. But you must not neglect your relationship with God. Even in times that we, when you're afraid, we must still call on God in our happy times, in our sad times, in times that when we are afraid, in times that we are frustrated, we still have to call on God because God is faithful. And when we come to him, he'll be able to comfort us just as he comforted Elijah in this situation. So don't concentrate on all the threats that Jezebel is threatening, which is the world. The world is full of so many threats, but we must not focus on that. Instead, we must run to God, for he will give us the comfort to carry on on our journey. The journey is not easy. The journey is not for the weak. The journey is not for the faint. But if we abide in Christ Jesus, he will abide in us and he will give us the strength that we need. Just as Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come, all you who are heavenly burdened, come for rest. For only Christ can give us the rest that we need. Amen. Let us pray as we bring this sermon to an end. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the word that you have given unto us. Father, we know that we are facing a lot of obstacles in this world. We are facing a lot of obstacles in our Christian life. But Lord, you have told us that you hold the world in your arms that in our weakness you are our strength that we should not give up because you will always be there for us so we thank you so much for all that you continue to do for us we pray that let your word fill our heart our mind and soul as we carry on our christian journey in jesus mighty name amen Amen. Now we're going to sing our second hymn and we're going to have our intercessional prayers. So I'm just going to share my screen again with you. If you just bear with me. So our second hymn is There is a Hope. Join me as we sing our second hymn. There is a hope by Stuart Townend. Sing this together. There is a hope that burns within my heart that gives me strength for every passing day. A glimpse of glory now revealed in me, earth mark, yet tries all found the way. I stand in Christ's with sins on you, and Christ in me. Through presence of free. 
So we thank God so much for this beautiful hymn and it sums up our sermon. And it tells us there is hope. Sorrow and suffering will one day pass away. There is a hope in Christ Jesus and we need to have hope in everything that we do. In this world, we need hope because hope is what strengthens our faith. Hope is what encourages us to wake up every day and face a new day in our Christian journey. So we must continue in hope. So now we're going to have our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you again, Lord. We commit the world into your precious hands, Lord. Father, we first of all pray for churches around the world. We pray for our Methodist church and other churches around the world. Lord, we pray for hope. We pray for strength. In this time when we've been affected by COVID, Father, a lot of us, we've even lost our faith. But Father, Lord, we pray for strength. Father, strengthen us as you strengthened Elijah. Give us new strength. Give us new hope to the church that will continue to serve you with wisdom, with courage, and with energy to challenge injustice in the world. Father Lord, we pray for countries which are struggling to cope with everything that is going on. We pray for countries where there is war, where there is famine, countries where there is shooting, where there is knife crime. Father, we pray, Lord, you will bring peace to these places. You will bring peace to people's hearts. You will bring peace to nations, that you will help them. You will make a way where there seems to be no way for them. And you will bring us solution that will help us to bring countries, nations together so that we can all solve these problems that is going on in our world. Father, we pray for the sick. 
We pray for the bereaved. We pray for the lonely. We pray for broken families. We pray that, Father, you will continue to be with them. Father, your word says you are the comforter of the weak. And we pray that you will be with us in this uncomfortable situation, in this uncomfortable time. Father, we pray for the people of India where there is a flight that has crashed and killed almost 19 people. Father, we pray for places where there has been a, an explosion, Lord. Father, we pray as people are mourning, Lord, as people are in discomfort, as people are frustrated, Father, we pray that give us your perfect peace, Lord. Give us that perfect peace that is beyond any understanding for them to deal with everything that is going on. Father, be with us. Give us strength as we carry on our journey, Lord. We pray that you will be with us. Encourage us every way. In Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. So we thank God so much for this opportunity for us to meet again. So I pray that you have a wonderful week ahead. And as we continue to go back to our work, our family, or whatever that we are doing, we must remember that in every situation, we must run to God, not the world, but run to God. And he will comfort us. He will encourage us and give us strength for the rest of the journey. So let us share the grace. So with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us and forevermore. Amen. May you go in peace. May you have a blessed week. May your family be blessed and protected in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.